Okay, so uh, as I was um, sitting in tech yesterday, watching them rewrite the last scene of the show for the like fifth, fifth time, um, I was like, huh, maybe I should figure out what I'm doing for class tomorrow morning. And uh, I went through and looked at the syllabus and realized that we're actually pretty far ahead. Um, and the next thing we were supposed to do, based on like the sequence of events, is uh, review the homework. Which I didn't think that would be, I didn't, I didn't think you would appreciate that very much if I sent you an email late last night saying, <laughs> hey, we're going to do the homework tomorrow instead, a Friday. So, um, so I didn't do that, but I also didn't want to just jump ahead either. So um, I saw, thought, hmm, what else could we do? But I, so I decided we would do some practice problems, OK, that are not the same ones that are on the homework, but very similar ones to the ones that are on the homework that may help you if you are still working on that. Um, seems like you should have been able to like, get it done by now, but because you've had it for a while, but you know, I know you all wait until the night before to do everything. So, okay, all right. I'm so, uh, so I thought we'd just kind of go through some of these and see how we do. So. Whoa. Okay, let's see if I can. I'll do that. Okay, so here's the first one. Are we ready? Here's the first one that we can try to tackle. What is the dB difference if I reduce a 700 watt amplifier to a 25 watt amplifier? Um, so here's, you know, to tackle a question like this, uh, one of the first things I want to find out is, am I looking for a positive number or a negative number with the way that I've worded this question? Negative. I'm looking for a negative number. Um, well, you could, in, you could probably deduce that I'm looking for a negative number because I'm saying I'm going to reduce my power from 700 watts to 25 watts, and the dB difference would be negative based on how we know that this works. So that's an important thing to know. Uh, so what is the formula we would use to figure out the dB difference between two different power levels? Anybody remember that? Nope. I have two power levels. I want to know the dB difference between them. Ten times the log of what? Yeah, one power divided by another power. Okay, so. Um, which number goes on top and which number goes on the bottom? Yeah, well, depends on what sort of number you want. Do you want a negative number or do you want a positive number? You want a negative number, so you would want to put the smaller number on top, right? So 25 on the top and 700 on the bottom. That should get you a negative number. Okay. So going to our calculator here, I would do 25 divided by 700. I get 0 0.0357, and I will do a base 10 logarithm of that times 10. Why times 10 instead of 20? Because it's a power, not because a it's a power, not a force. Yeah. Negative 14.47 dB, 14 and a half dB would be the difference between a 700 watt amplifier and a 25 watt amplifier. That make sense? Okay, that's an easy one. 
Okay. Um, so uh, what power would be 19 dB greater than 3 watts? Yes. So that would be my first step, too. Power ratio of 19 dB. How would I figure that out? So I would do 10 to the power of some decibel value divided by 10. And the decibel value in this case is 19. So 10 to the power of 19 divided by 10, that would look like, on pcalc, I would do 19 divided by 10 first. I got 1.9. And then I would do my 10 to the x button. And there is my answer for the power ratio anyway, which is 79.43. So what do I do with that number? Right, because remember, this is now the magic number that you can multiply any power level by, and you will get a power level that is 19 dB more than that. Okay, so we already have 3 watts, and we want to know what 19 dB more than 3 watts is. So yes, we just multiply 3 watts by this number. So times 3, and we get 238.3 watts, probably. OK? Well, not so bad. We did that one. Any questions about that? That makes sense? OK. So let's see. Here's another one. I have one more question. Yes. So the 20 rule, oh, wait. This, this would be the 3 and 10 rule, mm -hmm. not the 6 and 20. Right. right. OK, thanks. OK. So the power ratio is the number that you use. It's basically it's a multiplier. So yeah. in this case, it's the it's for 19 dB. So you just take that number and you multiply it by whatever the power is that you have already. Because okay. in this case, we had three watts. We wanted to know how many watts would be 19 dB more than that. So you just take that power ratio for 19 dB, multiply it by the three watts, and you get the number of watts that's 19 dB more than three. But if you had, if you already had 15 watts, you could multiply 15 by this, by that power ratio, and you would get x number of watts that was 19 dB more than 15 watts, right? Okay. And then that'd be six, six watts, so that's like three watts is one and you know it's like four dB or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then you do it the power ratio for 19, so it's just going to just just add that final number to the four, and that be how much? No. Is so, no, four dB is nothing in this. <laughs> So, yeah, but what I mean is, is you're not you're not doing this on decibels, okay. right? So this is about I have a certain amount of power in watts that already exists, yeah. and I want to know the number of watts that would be a certain decibel amount more or less than that. So if you wanted four d wanted to know something that was four dB more, for for example, you would need to figure out the power ratio for four dB. And then multiply that number by the watts you already had, which was maybe 3 watts again. And you would get a number of watts that's 4 dB more. Uh, but the part of this that involves decibels is just is you're wanting to know how many watts represents a certain decibel difference. right? Um, so you can't, you, you can't use a power ratio on a number that is a decibel. right? that you'll get a very weird answer if you do that. You can only use the power ratio as a multiplier for an actual power level. Right? Yeah. Make sense? Yeah. Uh, here's the same question, but um, now it's in volts. So in this case, what voltage would be 13 dB less than 19 volts? OK, uh, no. you're on the right track, but there's, this is a little trickier because I want 13 dB less. Yeah. So I don't want the voltage ratio for 13 dB. I want the voltage ratio for negative 13 dB. 
Okay, that's there's a difference, a pretty big difference. Okay, so that would be 10 to the power of negative 13 divided by 20. Okay, that's a different deal. So what would that be? It's 20 for everything that's not watts. <laughs> All right. So uh, to do this, I would do 13, and then I would flip that to a negative number, okay? And then I would divide that by 20, and I get negative 0.65, okay? And now I'm going to hit my 10 to the x button, and I get 0.22387211. Okay, so that is now the voltage ratio for negative 13 dB. So I can take any amount of volts, multiply it by this number, and I will get a number of volts that is 13 dB less. Okay, in this case, I want to know what is 13 dB less than 19 volts. Okay, so I would take this number, multiply it by 19 volts, or take 19 volts, multiply it by this number. Uh, so times 19. And I get 4.25. So that is 4.25 volts. So what this means is 4.25 volts is 13 dB less than 19 volts. Yeah? So if I were to write this whole thing out as one whole shebang, it would be that times 19 equals 13 dB less than 19 volts, right? Make sense? That's the whole formula there. Questions? All right. Uh, let's see what we got next here. I have black ink for some reason. Okay, how many dBm is a 1900 watt amplifier? I'm gonna say I'm gonna say a lot. <laughs> is where I'm gonna start from, uh, because zero dBm is how many watts? Yeah, yeah point. You know, so it's it's a thousand thousandth of a watt, right? Yeah. Okay. So 1900 watts is probably gonna be an awful lot of dBm. Okay. So, if I were to express the definition of dBm in a mathematical equation, what would that look like? Well, what about like just any net value of dBm? Log, yeah, so 10 times the log of any value of watts divided by 0 0.001, okay, because 0 0.001 is the reference level for dBm. So you should be able to just put any power level in there for x, and you'll get that power level in dBm on the output of this equation. So in this case, I'm going to put 1900, okay? So um, let's just see what that gets us. So we will get, we'll, we'll do one nine zero zero divided by point zero zero one. And I get 1.9 million, okay? Now I do my base 10 logarithm of that number and I get 6.2787536. And now what do I do? Yeah. Times 10. 62.79, we could round it to. 62.79 what? DBM. DBMs, exactly. So um, a 1900 watt amplifier could be expressed as a 62.79 DBM amplifier. Okay. Huh? 
How'd that go? Is that all right? Everybody, everybody follow that one? Not so bad? Yeah? Yes, yes, yes? OK. Um, so same, same thing, but backwards. So uh, what is the power in watts of a, 51, a positive 51 dBm amplifier? You would never see it spec this way, but just for fun. Um, um, so someone says, this is a, some really horribly misguided marketing person. Um, <laughs> says, this is a 51 dBm amplifier. Oh, I love it. And you're supposed to be impressed by that. And you're wondering, <laughs> and you're probably underwhelmed by that number. 51 dBm, why? Oh. That's nothing, right? That's a lot. So how many watts is that? How many watts is that? So uh, it's kind of the same problem we were doing before. So we need to know the power ratio of 51 dB first, right? 51 divided by 10. So 10 to the power of 51 divided by 10 is a really big number. Okay, so that is that is the power ratio of 51 dB. But that is not the answer to my question. Because this was spec in dBm. So this is the power ratio of 51 dB. What does the M part of that mean? Milliwatt, right? So I would need to multiply this number by the reference level for dBm. And the reference level for dBm is 0.001, right? So times 0.001 equals 125.89 watts. So this is a 100 and 126 watt amplifier. What was your guess? You know, yeah, you're real. Um, anybody? What was the what was the answer to our question before? Sixty-two point seven nine for nineteen hundred watts. So, you, so if we just did this in our head and walked it back, um, you could do. Uh, it was wait, how many dBm was that again? 62. Okay, so uh, so if we went down to 52 dBm, that would be a tenth of the power. So what would be 1900 divided by 10? 190, right? And that would give it. That would give us uh, the 52 dBm, right? Um, and we don't really know how to do one dB less, but. Yeah, but you see what I mean? Like you can kind of, if, you, if you're trying to kind of like guess, yeah. that's the way to do it. Is you sort of think, well, okay, what's a number that I know? Oh, you mean not speculate wildly? Right. A number that I know is that 1,900 watts is 62 <laughs> dBm, and 190 watts would be 10 dB less than that, and that's pretty close to where we are. So odds are that this number of watts is somewhere between 100 and 200 watts, right? And you'd be pretty darn close. And by the way, that is the version of this math that I do all the time. I mean, I don't whip out my calculator very often and try to figure this stuff out. But I do, in my head, think about things that way a lot of like, hmm, if I did want to make a 10 dB difference here, like, what would I have to do? You know, what, which, which amp in this rack is going to be even in that ballpark? You know, and I can do that kind of quick, rough math in my head. And know, oh, I'm looking for like a thousand more watts here somewhere, um, right? I do that all the time. Okay, how many dBW is a 250 watt amplifier? dBW is a little bit different game, isn't it? So, uh, yeah, the W is for one watt. So this, so it's kind of the same question. So. 
dBW, any value of dBW could be derived by saying 10 times the log of x divided by 1, right? So in this case, x is 250. So what's 10 times the log of 250 divided by 1? Two hundred fifty <laughs> log ten times ten. Yeah, twenty-four dBW basically. Yeah. Make sense? Because dBW, the reference level for dBW is one watt. Zero dBW equals one watt. Why? Just because. Just because. Because someone decided that that's what it would be. A committee, probably at an AES convention or something, decided this. <laughs> and you just have to be okay with that. There's not a whole lot of point in trying to question that. All right. So we're going to start getting a little more complicated. Um, so. I want to replace a 10 watt amplifier with one that is 7 dB more powerful. How many watts will the new amplifier need to deliver? So I'm sitting here, uh, I've got, um, that 10 watt amplifier doesn't sound like that much, but like I have one of those in my living room that drives my Atmos ceiling speakers. And it's just a little teeny one I bought on Amazon that I'm just using, it's fine, it does the job. Um, but I've maxed it out and I, need, and I still feel like I need 7 more dB. Well, how many how many watts am I looking for here? More, more right? More watts for sure, but like how many more? Well, it, let's just let's just think about it. Let's just like earball this thing. So um, it would be more than twenty watts, right? Because twenty watts would only be three dB more powerful which means that 40 watts would only be 6 dB more powerful. So I'm looking for something more than 40 watts. So, so I'm looking somewhere in the range of probably f somewhere between 40 and 100, I would guess. OK. So let's, let's do the math now. So I would first want the power ratio of 7 dB. So 10 to the power of 7 divided by 10. Somebody want to figure that out? Five point what? Oh one. Did anyone else get that? Yeah. Grayson got that. One more person. Yes. Yes. Okay. So uh, so I'm gonna now. That's multiply that by my ten watts, and I get what? Fifty watts. I'm looking for a fifty watt amplifier. Okay. Not so bad. Everybody follow that? Yeah. It's the exact same problem we've done like two or three times already. You just I'm just wording it a little more differently in sort of like real world things, but it's the exact same problem. Okay. Okay. <laughs> this one uh, looks more complicated than it is, uh, but let's give it a shot. So you got a loudspeaker. It is producing 90 dB SPL at 12 feet away. Okay. So if that's the case, what would its level be at 200 feet away? Well, this is just straight up inverse square law. Okay. There's no nothing more complicated than that. And uh, inverse square law is what in math? Yeah. 
So I'm just looking for dB loss over distance here is all I'm looking for. No. I mean, probably, but that's. Yeah. So, uh, so I'm starting at 12 feet away. I want to end up at 200 feet away. Am I going to get a positive number or a negative number out of that? Yeah. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to add that to the 90 dB SPL that I already have. That's, that's basically the math I'm going to do. So what is 20 times the log of 12 divided by 200? Somebody do that. Yeah. Anyone else get that? OK, so add 90 to that. <laughs> so approximately 65 dB SPL, yeah? Something like that? So it gets pretty significantly quieter. OK. So that one's not so bad. But OK, here is uh, adding a, another variable into this thing. So uh, I got a loudspeaker. Its sensitivity is 94 dB SPL, 1 watt, 1 meter. You, that just says that in the spec sheet. You put 1 watt of power into this thing, you will get 94 dB SPL at 1 meter. Uh, you're going to drive it with a 400 watt amplifier. Uh, and if you do that, what would be the maximum sort of level that you would be able to deliver 30 feet away? We need to figure out what it is at one meter of the 400 watts. <laughs> yeah, so that would probably be my first thing too is, OK, so I know what it can do at one meter with one watt, but what could it do at one meter with 400 watts? That would be the first thing I'd want to know. And then I could figure out how much quieter than that it would get by going 30 feet away. But this is, this is like a real deal problem, right? Because sometimes it's like, hey, this is your last speaker and this is your amp. This is the one you have to use. And you're asking yourself, is this going to get the job done? <laughs> All right? So I don't know. Let's see. So what would, uh, how would I figure out how loud it is at one meter with 400 watts? What would be, because that's the first, that's first problem is, if it is 94 dB with, at one meter with one watt, how loud is it at one meter with 400 watts? Sorry, multiply by 400. Yes. Multiply what by 400? Is that, that's Was it 400 divided by one? That's not 400. That'd be 400. Well, I mean, yeah. But OK. <laughs> I have 400 watts, and I have one watt. I, sh I could find out the dB difference between those two different power levels, right? That would be the first thing I'd want to do. So that would be 10 times the log of 400 divided by 1. What would that be? It's 400. Yeah. Yeah. 26.02. OK. So that's the dB difference between 400 watts and 1 watt. So the 1 watt, I only take, it only takes 1 watt to get 94 dB. So I would take 94 and add that to the 2602. And that would be my dB level at 1 meter with 400 watts. So what is 26.02 plus 94? 120 dB SPL at one meter with 400 watts. Yeah? OK. Yeah, so now I got to, so this is, so I'm, I'm generating 
with this amplifier, 120 dB SPL at one meter with 400 watts. So now how much of that am I going to like just is going to vaporize in the air uh, traveling 30 feet? Um, so some of it, yes. And why is that important? Right. So we know what the formula is for dB loss over distance, right? We just did it in the last question. What is that formula? Yeah. So one distance divided by the other. But if I put one, you know, 20 times log of one meter divided by, you know, one meter divided by 30 feet, that is not going to get me. <laughs> Uh, you know, I have to have the same type of units on both sides of that, right? So I need to either convert 30 feet into meters or one meter into feet. Um, I, I would say one meter into feet because that is something that you're going to run into all the time because you, you know that loudspeakers are spec one watt, one meter. So, you know, you could just memorize how many feet is one meter and then you don't have to worry about this. It's actually 3.28. So one meter equals 3.28 feet, OK? You can just trust me on that one. Uh, or you can look it up if you'd like to. OK. So one meter equals 3.28 feet. So now I could say, all right, 20 times the log of 3.28 divided by 30 gives me what? Twenty times log of three point two eight divided by thirty. I think you did that wrong too. Oh, I did do that wrong too. Five times twenty right up to negative nineteen. Yeah, negative nineteen point two two. Okay. Great. So what do I do with that number? No. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So remember, it's the 19.22 dB is the amount of dB that just vaporizes in the air before anybody gets to hear this. OK? So 19.22, what's 120 dB minus 19.22? Yeah. But it's you know 101 dB if you round it, okay. So the you the the most the best you could do with this scenario is 101 dB at 30 feet away. Is that going to be enough? Maybe. I would hope so. That's a lot. Um, I would hope that's enough. If it's not, you've got a pretty loud show on your hands. But yeah, that's this is totally reasonable. Setup. If someone hands you that loudspeaker and that amplifier and says this is what you got to use, that's like reasonable. That's fine. Assuming the loudspeaker can handle that much power, no problem. You should be able to get plenty of sound out of that. Okay. Same question, but now I want to know how loud it'll be at 30 meters away. Okay. So if I just like change feet into meters, how does that change the answer? Well, you just multiply, um, get three log right now, and you just multiply All right. So I know that I was getting what 120 dB SPL, one meter, 400 watts, right? That's great. Zero. Um, so now I just have to do the dB loss over distance for 30 meters. So that would be 20 times the log of 1 divided by 30. What's that? Negative what? Anybody else get that? Yeah. 
Yes? Excellent. Okay, must be right. We got at least three people that got that. Okay, so that's how much you lose traveling 30 meters. So you just take that off of the 120 now. Oh, that's awful. So negative 29.54 gives us what? How much is left? Yeah. So um, still should be plenty for, for most purposes. Yeah. But see the, big, see the big difference, right, between feet and meters, right? A meter is? Oh. Ninety point four five. Okay. So there you go. So question for you: Do grids change uh, on the, like where you're going? Like where it may when people start to At the moment, we're assuming that the sound goes e equally in all directions. Okay. I haven't actually taught you that it doesn't do that. Uh, wonderful. I love that. So. And, and, and actually, that is how it works, right? Sound naturally just goes everywhere yeah. in all directions. Um, it's, it's, it's us human beings that, that do things to it to try to make it not do that. So naturally, it just goes everywhere. Because that's how that inverse square law works, right? Is that the reason that it, that it behaves that way is that that total amount of energy gets spread out over a wider area the farther away you get from the center of that sphere. Okay? Uh, it's only when you can start figuring out how to confine it and get it to only go one direction that you can sort of save some of that energy that is getting dispersed over an area where no one's listening to it. But we haven't learned about that yet. So for now, we're just assuming it goes everywhere, which, again, it does. Even really directional loudspeakers aren't perfectly directional. OK, here's uh, another way of thinking about a very similar question. So if I have a loudspeaker with a sensitivity of 120 dBSPL, 1 watt, 1 meter, how many watts would I need to drive, with, drive it with if I, is that, how many watts I need to drive it with? OK, if I needed to achieve 107 dB peak SPL at 100 feet away. So I'm doing a loud show. I, you know, I need 107 dB SPL at the back row, which is 100 feet away. This is the last speaker I've been given to work with. And I want to know how many watts it's going to take to get this job done. And then I need to look and see if the last speaker can handle that many watts long term. We'll worry about that later. But I just want to know, like, what sort of amplifier am I looking for if this is even possible? Okay. Uh, again, real deal question. This is something you could, we would probably wrestle with in real life. So, uh, what, what do you think? What, how would I have to tackle this? Well, you could. You might be able to do it that way. Um, well, uh, you're just doing it backwards from the way I would do it. Okay. The way I would do it is I would, I would want to ask myself, if I'm delivering 107 dB at 100 feet away, how much did I lose making that trip? Uh, so, you would right. so I'm just wanting to know, like, if I'm making 107 dB at 100 feet, how much am I making at one meter? Right? Okay. That's what I'd want to find out. Yeah. And then I can compare that against my sensitivity and get a power level. Because I know that in order to make you know, any number of sound at 100 feet away, I'm going to give up a ton of it yeah. making that trip. So how much am I giving up? Uh, so uh, I would 
first figure out the dB loss over distance for 100 feet. Okay, so that would be 20 times the log of. In this case, uh, I'm really looking for a positive number, ideally, right? Because I just want to find this number that I can add to 107 dB, yeah. right? So I would do 100 divided by 3.28, yeah? Because 3.28 is how many feet is a meter. So what is 20 times the log of 100 divided by 3.28? Anybody else get that? Twenty-nine point six eight. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So. All right. So that's how much I'm I'm sort of burning up making this trip, which means if I'm if I need 107 dB SPL at 100 feet, I need 107 dB SPL plus 29. 0.68 at one meter, right? So what is 107 plus 29.68? Say that again. Okay, so that's so uh, that's 136.68 dB SPL at one meter. That's how much I got to be able to do. I already know how to make 102 of that. Right. How do I make 102 dB SPL at one meter? With one watt. It only takes one watt to do that. Great. So I can take that out of here, right? Just subtract that 102 from that. I already know how to make 102. So how much more? What's the difference? How much more do I need to make that I don't know how to make? Okay. So I got to figure out how to make 34.68 more dB, right? That's essentially the question I'm asking myself. How do I make 35 more dB using power? <laughs> and you sort of just said, so with all that, essentially you're saying, what's the distance that movement plus the 5 dB between 1 and 2 and 1 and 7? Sure. Right? Yeah. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really think about it that way, but yes, that that sounds right. Okay. So uh, great. So how do I how would I figure out how to make thirty four and a half more dB? We've done this problem like five times already today. Ten to the power of what over ten? Yeah. No, of the difference. That, that no, there. The dB, right? Yeah. Thirty-four point six eight. That would give me the power ratio of thirty-four point six eight dB, right? So what is ten to the power of thirty-four point six eight divided by ten? Okay. Two, three, what? Oh. 2,937. Okay. So uh, I would now multiply that by whatever I used to create the 102 dB, that, right? Which was one watt, right? times the one watt. So yeah, that's the answer. 2,937 watts. So I'm looking for a 3,000 watt amplifier. That's a lot. I would want to make sure that this loudspeaker could do that. Because um, that's a lot of watts to be pumping into a driver for a long period of time. So I would want to go back to the spec sheet and sort of see, hey, what is the long-term power handling of this thing? Um, yeah, 
So, but if if the if the spec sheet says that it could handle 3,000 watts long term, then I'm good to go. If it says it can't, then I gotta. So it usually will give you at least two values. It'll give you the what's called the peak power handling and the long-term power handling. The peak power handling is like you really ought not to put any more than this into it ever. Um, long-term is like it should be able to handle this much for a while. Um, and a while is a little loose. Um, uh, it tends to be, it, you know, each manufacturer kind of, AES has tried to standardize this a couple times. Um, but it's basically two hours. <laughs> so uh, it, it, it's probably at least, it's at least two hours, probably more. That's like the years. Yeah, so that's like, that's, that is like a sine, that's a sine wave, right? <laughs> and then what happens from there on? Yeah. Well, so, you know, a sine wave is a consistent sound. In, in reality, you know, in real life, you're doing a really dynamic sound, right? So. You're, the peaks are maybe hitting there, but you know you'll be you're well below that. I mean, the crest factor is six to twelve dB for most you know real sounds. So most of the time you're well below that. So it could handle it for quite a long time. So if you were going to quote a three thousand watt amplifier, you want to be in the mid long term. Yeah, I would, I would, I'd be looking for three thousand watts long term because because when I say I'm needing to achieve one hundred and seven, I'm I'm assuming that's like what I want people to hear. And I know that if they're hearing 107 dBSPL, I'm making a whole lot more than that peak because of crest factor, right? So yeah, we'd be looking at the long-term power handling. We need to be 3,000 watts before I'd feel comfortable trying to do this. Because I tell you, a loudspeaker with that kind of sensitivity is going to be expensive. That's a pretty sensitive cabinet there. I really, it's going to be expensive to blow that up. <laughs> Okay. So I'm going to want to be super careful with that. Okay. Last one. You ready? Similar question, but just worded a little bit differently. Um, so, so this is the system's already there. This is what it, this is. This is the specs of the system, um, and they're saying you're mixing in the back of the theater, and that's 100 meters away. It's a big theater. It's probably actually outside somewhere. Um, you're doing a festival somewhere outside, uh, and this is the system they've given you, um, and you're going to do not a super loud show, but. You know, you're, you're looking for an average SPL of 85 dB SPL um, all the way at the back. That's, that should be loud but comfortable, right? This is normal show, unless you're doing a really loud rock show or something. But this is, this is, this is a loud theater show. Um, so the question is, can it do it? Can this system do it? Can you use the house system, or do you need to like bring your own? That's the question. Okay, because you're thinking that this this is an 85 dB show. You're doing Grimm's fairy tales, which is what I'm doing right now. I'm hitting about 85 dB, okay, in, in some of these things. So, uh, <laughs> Grimm's with a Z, yes. Uh, this is my show right now. Although my back row is nowhere near 100 <laughs> meters away. No, significantly closer. Uh, but program-wise, this is the show. All right, so. Uh, Okay, how would I how would I figure this out? So we're trying to figure out if you're going to want long term power handling, what kind of long term peak power handling is that going to be? Well, we're as, I mean, so we're assuming that if it's four hundred watts long term, then that's what I'm gonna give it. You are getting four hundred watts. Yeah. Okay. So I'm assuming that, that, that they've got the amp that does that. All right. Okay. If they don't, then I've got a more complicated problem on my hand. But I'm assuming that someone's done their homework on this, and they are driving this loudspeaker at peak efficiency. Well, then we then take the spec that we have there, and we go through any one of those. We either take one and then find out what is the EDS on the machine. 
Yeah. Well, yeah, but there's a, there's a, yes, the, exactly, that is the thing, but there are a few steps there. So, what um, do you do with those? so the first thing I would want to know I, is, okay, yeah, so that's be the first question I would want to answer is if it does 94 dB at one meter with one watt, how many dB SPL does it do with 400 watts at one meter? That would be the first thing I'd want to know. So uh, that's going to be 10 times the log of 400 divided by 1, right? Um, plus 94. <laughs> What's that? Is that right? Anybody else get that? I need one more. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> so 400 divided by 1 is my first step. Log 10 times 10 equals 26.02 plus the 94. And I get 120. 120 dB SPL, 400 watts, one meter. All right, so that's what this loudspeaker is doing max, right? If I turn everything up, I maximize it, my game structure, everything is perfect. The best case scenario, this thing is putting out 120 dB SPL at one meter away. And that's if I do everything right and make no mistakes. Okay? So if, if you are on your best on your best day, you do everything right, this is what you're going to get. I don't know. Let's find out. So if, I, if, if on my best day, with no mistakes, I'm generating 120 dB SPL at one meter with this system, then what's it looking like at 100 meters away where I'm mixing the show from? So this would, I would want to know how much sound I lose making that trip. Yeah. So that's going to be 20 times the log of uh, 1 meter divided by 100 meters. That'll tell me how much I'm losing. So 20 times the log of 1 divided by 100. What's that? Yeah, we could do that one in our head, right? It's 40 dB because it's, it's 20 dB every time you divide it by 10, right? So negative 40 dB going that distance. So I got to subtract that now from the 120. So minus 40. What's 120 minus 40? 80. 80, yeah. See, I'm not quite there. So on my best day, making no mistakes and perfectly tuning my system, everything's perfectly aligned, gain structure's perfect, Power is good, temperature is good, humidity is good. I can, everything is perfect. I am still 5 dB below my target. Odds are, odds of you being perfect are low, right? Odds of me being perfect are low, right? You know, in almost every sound system, there's probably 12 dB of gain hiding in there that you just don't get because you haven't con you haven't configured your gain structure right. So odds are this is not going to cut it. I'm going to have to have a conversation with the production manager about you know some other options here. Good because either we need some some something a sound system or a loudspeaker that's can generate a bit more sound, or we need to change the goals of the show. Or move the mix position, or 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 just generally, the yeah, generally go to a smaller venue, <laughs> maybe not sell all the maybe seats. Not a wall or the <laughs> or you know maybe maybe the answer is this is fine, but I need to I need to put like a delay fill or something halfway so down the seats. 
Well, yeah. So could I get the last speaker closer? You know, it, it, you know, if it is, is it going 40 feet in clear space with no one listening to it? Yeah. You know, in which case, could I like just move it closer, and it, would that take it out of the coverage zone for anybody who needs to listen? Anyway, these are the kind of questions you'd have to ask. Um, I would, I would answer those questions before I would try to figure out how to buy something new. I would try to just like, is there some way I can move something around to get close? Because you know that you're burning up 40 dB just making this trip to the back row. So you've got that 40 dB. That's a lot that you're losing. So is there some way you could lose less than that? The only way would be to shorten the distance, but, but maybe, maybe you could. OK? So how is that? Any questions? Does that make sense? Yeah. Kind of, sort of? <laughs> so the other thing to keep in mind is there's a lot of stuff that I haven't told you yet, right? I haven't, we haven't, I haven't told you about the fact that the loudspeaker doesn't send all the sound equally in every direction. That would certainly affect the result here. The other thing I haven't told you is that just because the last speaker is capable of delivering 80 dB SPL at the back row doesn't mean that you'll get anywhere near there the second you put a live mic right below that loudspeaker. Um, you might hit a feedback point well before you end up at your 120 dB SPL at one meter. Dep how far away is that mic from that loudspeaker? If it's 10 feet away, you're screwed. Right? You're not even. You're not going to get anywhere near that 120 dB at that one meter. Okay. Uh, so these are all th these are, these are all the things that are coming in the next few weeks. Is okay. How does directivity affect this problem? How does game before feedback affect this problem? And then, like, how does just acoustics in general affect this problem? Because just because I maybe I could figure out how to generate that 85 dB SPL. But what is, the, what is the loudness of that, the direct sound coming from that loudspeaker, relative to the loudness of the sound bouncing off the walls? And if it's not a very big number, then it doesn't matter how loud I get it. It's never going to sound loud enough, because I'm never going to understand a word of anything. Okay, So these are the things that we will talk about over the next five or six more weeks. Okay. All right. Any questions? That was, my question. that was your question. That was my question. <laughs> my question was, have you seen the acoustic? I have seen that. Yes. I actually didn't think it was very funny, but. <laughs> hey, I think it's funny. It was my dad. My dad thinks it's funny. I mean, it was sort of like kind of funny, but. <laughs> okay. Other questions? OK, so you should, you should definitely be able to tackle all the problems in that homework now. Like I've literally done every type of question that I've given you in that homework. You should be able to do this. OK? So that is what we will do on Friday. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Friday morning we'll go over the homework.